Welcome back to the shop, everybody. Tonight I'm starting on a project that I think a lot of you with small lathes and potentially even some of you with intermediate sized lathes might be interested in. I'm going to upgrade or replace the change gear and banjo setup for my lathe. There's nothing substantially wrong with it as is from the factory. There's just a bunch of little things that are annoying that kind of add up and in general make me not want to have to deal with changing the feed rate or you know threading anything unless I absolutely need to. So I'm gonna try and remedy that with this project. Um, for what I plan on doing, I'm gonna need more than one banjo so I'm definitely making some of these. The main issue with the stock one is just that it's a really rough casting that's again pretty roughly machined. For example this is the slot in the back that these two nuts um, fit down into. These are what these shafts here that the actual gear is ride on, um, screw into, and then lock fast. So as you can see right here, I can't move that down any further because it's caught on a, a rough part of the, the banjo. I've also had them get cocked in here just enough and then bite into the roughly machined sides to the point that I have to physically remove the banjo from the machine and then you know take it apart and then reassemble everything. So that's definitely getting redone. The next thing that's of, a, of concern is the actual keyed bushing that a geared pair rides on. So it's, you know, this is just a bushing with a key, a key slot cut into it for a key. As you can see, it's, well, butterfingers here. It goes in like this. This is a, a washer that's designed to uh, properly space the gears. You know, it's just got a, it's a regular washer with a slot cut in it to clear the key. And the problem with this is it's generally, it's made from like a, some type of material. I don't know what it is, it's obviously steel, but it's just generally annoying to deal with. It catches a lot. It's actually, as you can see there, it's now cocked itself on the, uh, on the bushing and now I can't push it through. You know, so that needs to be fixed. So what I plan on doing, well there, see there, it came out that way but I couldn't push it through. So what I plan on doing is I'm gonna completely eliminate the need for this washer. If I can get the key out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially gonna make the bushing and the washer one piece, you know, just be single bushing with a raised section, and then I'll just machine the keyway down through it. So I'll lose the benefit, if you can call it that, of the washer, you know, retaining the key. But hopefully, you know, I won't have to deal with it, you know, it cocking itself and just being a giant pain in the butt. The next thing that needs to be addressed, and this is actually the biggest one, are these shafts that the bushings ride on, like so. First off, um, you have to screw them in like so. You know, you put two of them on. If I can get that down in there. And then you just lock them down. The issues with them, well, there are a couple of issues with them. Firstly, to secure the bushing, you put the, the bushing on with the gears on it, obviously. You put a washer on, and then you're supposed to take two nuts and then lock them down. The problem with it is, let me get them back off of here. There's no shoulder that the washer or the nuts you know, can bear against. So you're, you've got two wrenches going, trying to fiddle with it to get the proper clearance so that they spin freely, but yet there's not an excessive amount of slop. So when I redo this, I'm going to design it in some way that there's actually a hard shoulder that the washer, or I don't think I'm going to use these, I'll probably make custom washers, will seat against so there's not going to be any futzing around with wrenches to get a good clearance set up. The next issue is with how they expect you to lock them down. As you can see right there, you just grab a hold of them like so. They took the threaded section and then machined four flats on it. So you could grab it with a wrench. The problem with that is these are not super hard threads. You know, this is not a hardened shaft. 
So they get chewed up, and in, just because of the way they're, they're, they're made, I'd probably tell you one time in five, I spend 30 or 40 seconds just trying to get the stupid nut started properly. So that's an annoyance that I'm going to get rid of. And the reason for that is I think the whole reason for all of these, these workarounds and gyrations is so they could put these oilers in here. But because you're constantly futzing around with the washers and the nuts to get the proper clearance, I kind of think, in my opinion, that it's all for naught because you know, you, if you're going to try and run a, little, a thin film of oil as your lubrication, or I should say your bearing surface, you've got to have tight tolerances. And I've, talk, I've thought about it several times, I've witnessed it, and I've talked about it with my father who's got a lot more machining background than I am. He started life as a tool and die maker. It's just not possible to get these on, get it down to where you have a tolerance of only a thousandth or two of an inch. So what normally happens is you put oil in here and then within a minute or two of starting the machine, it's all slung itself out. So that's all gonna go away. It's just gonna be a shaft with a shoulder of the, you know, the appropriate length. And then I'll use a substantially smaller thread size here so that I don't, you know, I'm gonna make the, uh, the oilers just completely go away. There's just gonna be a threaded shaft. And then I can run two nuts down on, use properly sized nuts, not thin ones, so that I need, um, what do they call them? Tabit, is it Tabit? Tabit, I think is what they're calling. Tabit um, wrenches. I'm not gonna need to use those. I'll just use regular sized nuts because I've got plenty of room in the machine. And then I'll be done with it. When I was initially considering this project, I wanted to make sure that the time and effort I was gonna put into it was worth it. So over the course of a few evenings, I sat down and wrote a program that ran through every possible gear combination for my lathe and then validated that the actual gear trains, the gear combinations I should say, would work mechanically. And then with that information I bought a handful of extra gears and then I generated the three charts that you see here. And what these charts are, are the gear combinations needed to, to achieve um, given feed rates, um, given imperial threads, and given metric threads. And what the, the most important thing about these charts is that for the power feed, for example, I've come up with gear combinations between 3.1 thousandths per revolution and 23.8 thousandths per revolution that do not require me to move the shaft. They all have the exact same center to center distance from the top shaft to the middle one to the lead screw. So for threading, once I have a banjo set up, I don't ever have to move the shafts. For imperial threads, I only have to move the top shaft and that's again only if I have to um, turn a 44 TPI thread, which isn't very likely. I have to do a little more moving if I want to cut metric threads, but that's to be expected because I have an imperial lathe. But by fudging the numbers a little bit and checking the pitch error, I should be fine for everything. And for all the standard threads I'm going to cut, say between 0.6 and 2.0, which are, covers a lot of standard metric threads, I won't have to move the shafting or the shafts either. They will just be fixed. I'll just swap out the gears as needed. And that's the reason why I'm going to make three banjos. I'm going to make one purely dedicated to feedy for feeds, one purely for imperial threads, and then one for metric threads. They will just sit in the drawer ready to go. So if I need to do one or the other, I can just pull the banjo off, swap out the gears appropriately, and get to work. So that's what this project is going to be. I've got some blanks cut out for the banjos, so I'm going to take you guys over to the mill and get started. I've got three blanks mounted in the vise. Um, the stock was originally two inches wide, and I've got to bring it down to one and five eighths. So as you can imagine, I've got a lot to remove, so I won't bore you with much of it, but I will try and give you a couple of close-ups here. So I've got three sides squared up, and this is the last pass on the fourth side.
I'm pretty sure I've already showed this before, but I wanted to show it again just in case for those that haven't seen it. So I've got everything set up for cutting the slots in the banjos. And since I don't have a DRO, I have three dial indicators set up. One for each side, and then another one for centering stuff. So what I do is I just keep going back and forth from stop to stop, reading. That gives me the ends of my slot, and then the side to side gives me the width of the slot. It's a... Uh, it's not an elegant solution, but it's one that works. So let me move the camera around and I'll show you guys getting started. So I've already touched off. I'll touch off again just to validate that I'm set correctly. I'm going to plunge down a little bit and then I'm just going to go back and forth. So I've got this one finished. As you can see, let's see that. Yeah, I got into the bird there. So, um, what I'm thinking about it, if you don't have a dedicated stop for your vise, a cheap, or in this case, this is a cheap one, but I mean, any old magnetic base will work just as well. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight one that I got early on that I've broken the handle off, so I just have to use a wrench now to lock it down. Um, I'm gonna go deburr this over at the wire wheel and then I'll come back and get to work on the other two. 